Oh man, so the crypto titans are clashing. So uh, about a day ago, we got a Substack post from Sam Bankman Freed. He started up a Substack and he put out what was basically his defense on his position with FTX. Stuff that we've already heard him say, so it's not really anything new. Uh, but there are some key snippets that I wanted to go over with you guys that I got from a Bitcoin.com article. And it starts off and it says, quote unquote, I didn't steal funds and I certainly didn't stash away or billions away, the former CEO of FTX wrote. SBF also emphasized that he did not, quote unquote, run Alameda for the past few years. He stated that three factors contributed to the fall of FTX and Alameda, including Alameda's balance sheet swelling and Alameda's failure to sufficiently hedge its market exposure. Additionally, SBF believes that the final nail on the coffin for FTX was driven by Binance CEO Cheng Peng CZ Zhao. And there's a couple problems that I have with these statements from Sam. So one is, is while yes, Alameda definitely could have been better um, and they definitely contributed to their own fall. I'm not denying that. They were running loose with their money, their positions and everything else. Um, and they definitely were heading down the wrong path. My problem with this statement is that Sam could have just cut Alameda off instead of trying to fix the problem with customer funds on FTX, which is ultimately what he decided to do. Uh, and that is where I have a big problem with this. Like, again, I'm not denying that Alameda was having a bunch of issues on their end. Like, that is very clear to me. Yeah, I'll agree there. But the solution or Sam's solution to the problem was not a sustainable one and not one that ever should have been even considered. He should have cut Alameda off. Uh, second is that for him to blame CZ for the final nail in the coffin, I'm look, yeah, while CZ, you know, announcing his sale of FTT and everything else did push everything over the edge, that is hardly CZ's fault. Had Sam been running things like he said he was running things um, and doing everything properly, this wouldn't have been a big issue. They would have lost some funds in a bank run. It would have stunk big time uh, for FTX, but at the same time, they would still be solvent and not where they are today. All of those things are things that I think uh, is really Sam's fault. You know, I don't really see how he can blame anyone else for those decisions. The second statement that we got from this is that SBF also mentioned that after transitioning FTX US to John J. Ryan III, that's the CEO that stepped in to handle the liquidation, the exchange was still solvent. Quote unquote, it's ridiculous uh, that FTX US users haven't been made whole and gotten their funds back yet, SBF commented in his blog post. The former FTX CEO, who had been disgraced, also discussed his dealings with the new FTX CEO, Ray, and Puck News reporter Theodore Schleifer. I think I said that right. Uh, the Puck reporter met SBF at his parents' home in Palo Alto, California, where SBF greeted him wearing his government-issued ankle bracelet. SBF's German shepherd, Sandor, was also present at the house. Now, I know there's not a lot of substance there, um, but the beginning point here where Sam is talking about FTX users should be made whole and given their money back, I think that as the FTX US arm did have everything fully collateralized like they were supposed to. The issue is that I don't know that legally they can give all of those funds back to U.S. customers, given that FTX U.S. is so closely tied to FTX International. I think through the bankruptcy, uh, it kind of subdues both of them um, and restricts that. And so I'm not a, an expert on the legal side of things by any means, but I'm guessing that there's some sort of barrier there that is preventing them from giving those funds back. Um, I guess that that is why they haven't done it already. I'd imagine that that would have been one of the first things that they've done if it was a very viable option and that there wasn't some legal blockades there. Um, again, it's just kind of silly to me. Um, I thought it was funny. Obviously, Sam is on house arrest. Um, that's what, what he's talking about with the government issued ankle bracelet, um, as we know. So the third statement. Schleifer reported that SBF reached out to the new FTX CEO, John Ray, six or seven times to offer his help. The Puck reporter noted that Ray has, quote unquote, kept his distance from the former FTX CEO. The interview highlights that SBF is lonely and isolated, and he's relieved to have gained, regained access to the internet. I'm sure he is. Slifer reported. The Puck reporter also known SBF before the exchange demise as they chatted in the fall of 2020. Schleifer wrote, we were both interested in the effective altruism movement. Effective altruism, I swear, if I hear that associated with Sam again, it's going to drive me crazy. And they would text, quote unquote, text every few months about politics or philanthropy. The interview was two and a half hours long, and SBF discussed his hardship of being vegan when he was 
in jail in the Bahamas and eating lots of peanut butter. I thought that was pretty silly. Um, but he's talking about how you know the current CEO isn't dealing with Sam Bankman Freed, which why would you? Like, I don't blame him there. Like, why if you're John Ray and you're stepping in to help liquidate FTX through this bankruptcy, why would you want to consult the guy who couldn't keep the numbers straight on his bank account and cause this whole fiasco? Like, I would want to throw everything that Sam is doing or was doing out the window and develop my own plan going forward, which I'm sure is what he is thinking here. He probably also doesn't want to talk to Sam due to the legal stuff. He doesn't want to get intertwined with Sam Bankman frieds legal dealings uh, outside of FTX itself. You know, like I'm sure he probably figures the further I keep myself from Sam, the better here. And again, I can't blame him for that. I don't know why Sam would think that he would do anything other than that. Uh, the last statement is while awaiting his October 3rd, 2023 trial in the Southern District of New York and facing eight counts of financial fraud and conspiracy charges, SBF continues to play lots of video games. According to Schleifer, SBF's game choice today is Storybook Brawl, but the disgraced FTX co-founder does not use his gambling handle or speak with other players. I think he or gaming handle. Sorry. Despite playing video games, quote-unquote, it doesn't really fully distract from what's going on, SBF told Schleifer. Um, again, I thought that was just another part of just insight of what Sam is doing. It sounds like he's just really playing a lot of games, uh, creating Substack articles, tweeting some, um, and that's basically Sam's life right now. And, you know, look, again, th the whole problem that I have with all of this is that Sam is trying to put blame on everybody else except himself, and I just don't see how that that is even a viable thought, right? Like he is the one that ultimately choose chose to run things the way he did. Uh, and all like the solution that he was offering wasn't really a solution. It was taking money that wasn't his and spending it on other things, which is obviously something that he had been doing really all along. Um, uh, but this was again, what I would call the final nail in the coffin, not necessarily CZ's case. Now, it doesn't end there. So after the Substack article, we got a thread from Arthur Hayes basically criticizing Sam's calculations of how things went down and wondering where some missing money is. So Arthur Hayes tweets out, he says, before I finish, let's do some math. Assumptions. FTX deposit base equals $15 billion. Alameda position notional is $1.3 billion. Processed withdrawals pre-bankruptcy were $5 billion. So that was when everyone was rushing to the gates, you know, it was roughly $5 billion withdrawn at that time. First, let's assume that Alameda's position goes to zero for a loss to FTX of $1.3 billion. Net of customer deposits, that's $13.7 billion. So again, that notional position is basically the exposure that FTX would have had to Alameda. So he's calling it roughly $1.3 billion. And Arthur Hayes is a, a really smart guy. He knows finance. He knows these things pretty well. Um, and so I, you know, I'm trusting the numbers that he put out here. But uh, on the third point, he says, next, we subtract the amount of processed withdrawals and come to $8.7 billion. So that's that 13, roughly $13 billion number minus the $5 billion gets us to $8.7. FTX stopped processing withdraw withdrawals after the $5 billion because they ran out of funds. So how does Alameda going completely bust on FTX lead to a cessation of withdrawals? What happened to the other $8.7 billion? That's a really good point, right? Everybody was withdrawing, but only $5 billion got withdrawn. So even if Alameda went out, the exposure that FTX had was only $1.3 billion. So where's the rest of the money? Five, instead of telling us about the position of the hedge fund you claim to not have managed, please explain how your exchange went bust when Alameda could have only caused a $1.3 billion loss to the exchange. Six, your ex has a theory of what happened to that $8.7 billion, but I guess you have a different story. Why don't you tell us, since you're being so forthcoming with information, I look forward to your next post. So, again, what Arthur is saying here is that the numbers really don't add up. Where's that difference? Where's that extra $8 billion? And a lot of people have been asking the same question because these he's using numbers that Sam has provided. So, in Sam's math, that's roughly what everything comes to. Um, my theory for this is that it's not really $8 billion. They never really had as much money as they, they claim to have had. One, because of accounting errors, right? We know that they had bank tracking problems. So my guess is a lot of these numbers got all skewed and messed up along the way. So I don't think you can trust any of these numbers. Um, and it's really ridiculous that Sam is even doing analysis on these numbers when he knows that all of the mistakes that he claimed himself to have made with their bank account and everything else. 
my other point or other piece to this theory is that these assets were just a lot of shit coins, really. They were tokens that he claimed and marked and did a whole bunch of manipulation to on the market to make them look like they were worth a ton. It is what FTX was holding on their balance sheet, and they were using the market cap of those tokens to value those assets, when in reality, if they would have sold those tokens that they had, um, you know, like Serum and a lot of other junk coins that they came up with, they would have never gotten that full amount out of them. They would have gotten maybe a quarter in my eye, like as far as what I would guess that they would have been able to actually sell and get out of those tokens. So I don't think it was ever that much money to begin with. I think that that's why we have this big gap in what is making such a mess of the numbers is that, again, that was not necessarily, it wasn't like cash on their balance sheet, right? It wasn't cash that they could just divvy out at any time. It was tokens that were claimed to be worth X amount of money, but it, obviously if they would have sold them, they never would have gotten that out of it. So I think that's where the gap here comes into play. I think that's where most of the problems with what FTX was having came into play, right? That's why they stopped at $5 billion withdrawals is because they didn't have that other cash. They had to go sell assets. Well, those assets that they claimed to be worth X number of dollars were not actually worth that. So yeah, this whole thing is just kind of crazy to me, but I wanted to share it with you guys to get some more clarity on what is going on on the FTX front. And I will continue to keep you guys updated. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.